270. That's the number of electoral college votes needed to become president. And although Donald Trump appears to be closing the polling gap with Hillary Clinton heading into this week's Republican convention, his path to 270 is still a long one. But my next guest has some ideas about how Trump can get there. John Brabender is a Republican strategist and advisor to former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum. So, John, thanks for coming in on, on a Saturday. Appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here. All right. So uh, you, the conventional wisdom about a presidential race, particularly for a Republican in this era, is you, you, you've picked the swing states you think you can win. You focus all of your resources and time on those states, and that's where you spend, and that's how you win it, to eke out 274 or 280 or 290. You say that's wrong with Donald Trump. Why? Well, I, I, I laugh every day because we're all <laughs> still talking about conventional wisdom. You would think by now we'd wake up and understand that this is not the quintessential race. You know, things <laughs> have changed because Donald Trump is not the quintessential Republican nominee. And in a, in a strange way, that actually gives Republicans more hope than maybe they would have had. I mean, look, we lost the last two elections for president. Right. I thought Romney actually ran a, you know, a good campaign, you know, and we lost. And so what Trump does is he actually resets the entire board. Instead of us all of a sudden looking at and challenging in states like Virginia, Colorado, New Hampshire, Iowa, which have been tough states for us, he brings other states into play that are bigger states with more votes for us, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. And I, I think that it's because these are people who feel disenfranchised from the political process. They feel both parties have let them down, and they like what they're hearing but from Trump. John, who are those voters? Are we talking about, we hear a lot about the white working class. We hear a lot about whites without college degrees. But if you look at the, the collar counties of Pennsylvania, for example, a state you know very well, that's loaded with Republicans with college degrees, and Donald Trump is not performing as well with those Republican voters. Can he get enough of those uh, unconventional Republican voters or people who stayed home last time to offset those losses in the collar counties of Philadelphia. Well, that's that's the whole paradox of the Donald Trump campaign is that they have to struggle to get what should be some of their natural votes. You know, moderate Republican women voters, where they're now struggling with, while at the other hand they're offsetting with some Democrat blue collar votes. But in a state like Pennsylvania, he still has to do well with the collar counties in Philadelphia. Now, I will say this. One good symptom of that we saw in the Republican primary is Donald Trump won every single county in Pennsylvania, which means he not only got the conservative middle vote of the state, a lot of the more moderate votes in those collar counties, Bucks County, Montgomery, Delaware, and so forth, Donald Trump won those as well. He still has to do better, and like Romney, he has to win among married women for him to win nationwide. Does he have to, you, you said he needs to run an unconventional race. Okay, you said here are the votes in the states he needs to target, but what else does he need to do? Because right now, if you look at the money that Hillary Clinton has, the advantage there, and you look at the organization advantage she has, Trump's not gonna catch up with her on that. What does he need to do to offset that? Well, first of all, I would argue that again, that's the context of how campaigns used to run. Now there's so much free air time that people get to know the candidates so intimately that advertising doesn't matter as much in a presidential race as it probably does in a Senate or, or congressional race, number one. Number two is because of digital, the internet, social, all those type of things, what the party used to do, you can now do online. So you don't need as much money for those type of things. But don't you need turnout operations, John? You got to get your sister and your brother and your brother-in-law to the polls. You do, but what I believe is, first of all, Trump doesn't have a lot of that stuff in place, and it's too late to do it. But what he does have is a large megaphone every time he goes on television. And what he needs to do is to motivate people to make this a more emotional campaign, something where they want to get up and they're going to show up and vote. And I do think we have a very motivated electorate out there. That's how Donald Trump beat 16 credible candidates for president is right. that it's a different type of election. You mentioned Pennsylvania as a key state to watch. Obviously, Ohio is always a key state to, to watch. Republicans have to win it. What, what other states do you think Trump needs to win to prevail? 
Well, I, I think ultimately it's going to come down to Florida. I think getting a combination of all those other states and putting them together is much more challenging. We're already seeing things that are happening. I think, number one, the irony maybe of all is Rubio getting into the Senate race is going to help Trump a lot. I think it's going to motivate some Republican voters to show up, add enthusiasm. Number two, that we saw that right after the Comey report came out, Hillary's unfavorable started to go up in a number of states, specifically in Florida. And so it shows the volatility of them. If they're unsure about Hillary Clinton now in, in July, that's not good for her. She was supposed to be the stable, safe vote. And so I don't think Florida is out of the equation. And if somehow Trump right. can win Ohio, win Pennsylvania, win Florida, win the Romney states from last time, well, he's, he's now your president of the United States. All right, John Brambitter, thanks for sharing that.